Hey everyone, welcome back to another awesome iceberg video. If you just want to skip to the first layer of the iceberg, then skip to the timestamp on the screen. But if you want a further explanation on the iceberg, then stay for the rest of the intro. For all the real ones that stayed for the rest of the intro, for the first time ever in a video, this iceberg was actually created by me. But I must give credit where credit is due. Shout out to the Reddit users Inevitable Speed 990 Bargled Pants, and Harvey 1A for their icebergs that helped me inspire this iceberg as I have used some of their entries, as well as my own, to make this Skylanders iceberg. This is not the best Skylanders chart out there, but hey, it's pretty good. This iceberg also has the most entries out of any iceberg I've ever covered before with 112 entries. Something else I must mention is that I've invited a couple friends to be in this video. Crypt Crusher, Crash of Skylands, Mike Noid, Willie Metis, and Colette Gimuspenny will all be making appearances in this video, so thank you all for joining. But with all that being said, grab some snacks and enjoy this huge iceberg video. Let's get started. Spyro isn't from Skylands. This entry refers to two things. The first one is that the original game series Spyro is not from Skylands, but his own game series Spyro, which started in the late 1990s. The other thing this entry refers to, though, is that in the Skylanders lore itself, they explain that Spyro is not from Skylands, but from a faraway place from Skylands, and eventually, later in life, found his way into Skylands. Light Cores Light Cores are variant characters introduced in Skylanders Giants. Light cores are remodels of old characters that have certain parts of their characters light up. Light cores were in Skylanders from Giants to Swap Force, but Giants are the only gimmick landers to have light core features. In Giants and in Swap Force, there was one light core per element on the rosters, and it feels weird that there was only two games where light cores existed because it feels like light cores had a much bigger impact than just two games. Magic Items Magic items are featured in every Skylanders game. Some magic items are meant to give a temporary advantage to you, like the healing elixir which gives you extra health. Some magic items are used to give you extra content, whether that be new levels or new battle arenas. The Imaginite Mystery Chest introduced in Imaginators are also considered magic items as well, and the trophies brought in Superchargers are also magic items too. Skylanders are able to convert gold into magic in order to gain new powers. However, after upgrading a Skylander to a certain point, you'll be forced to make a choice on what new powers to acquire. Upgrade paths allow the players to choose which new powers to enhance your Skylander forward. For example, you can choose Spyro's Sheep Burner Path to further develop Flame Ball attacks, but you will be missing out on the Blitz Spyro Path that further develops his charging attack. One upgrade path can only be active at once. Series 2, Series 3 and Series 4 Skylanders can change their upgrade paths at any time, otherwise you would have to reset your Skylander or go into Superchargers and use the Skylander Tutor power you get when your Portal Master rank reaches level 74. Twat Force characters actually have 4 upgrade paths, 2 for the top and 2 for the bottom. And while Imaginators technically don't have upgrade paths, you can only have 1 weapon power one elemental power, and one secret technique active at a time, but you can switch between them freely. Toys to Life Skylanders popularized the Toys to Life genre, but it's not the only game featuring it, and the earliest Toys to Life game is UB Funky, which was a web game that used real life toys as characters. Some more popular Toys to Life games, however, are of course Disney Infinity and Lego Dimensions. Amiibo are the only Toy Slide characters that are still being produced today, however they don't have a standalone game for their characters like the games previously mentioned as they can be used in different Nintendo games and not their own game. Winged Sapphire Winged Sapphires are collectibles within the Skylanders series that will bring down the price of upgrades for all your Skylanders. In Skylanders Spyro's Adventure, the Winged Sapphires are only found in the hub world, but from Giants to Trap Team, the Winged Sapphires are found in each level. Which means if you find all the Winged Sapphires in a game, the prices for upgrading your Skylander can dramatically decrease, which of course helps out a lot if you're trying to upgrade a lot of Skylanders at once. In Superchargers, they are no longer in every single level. Instead, you can buy them from the shop in Superchargers, and they also appear within levels and boxes, but it's very randomized on how you can get them. In Skylanders Imaginators, Winged Sapphires are removed from the game. Honestly, some Winged Sapphires I remember being really freaking hard to find, but it was well worth it because later upgrades, especially Soul Gem upgrades, can be very expensive. So Toys for Bob was created in 1989, 34 years ago. That's two years older than me. It's a while ago. 
And it took them a while for they actually got their feet on the ground, but they started with a game called Star Control. And from then on, it's history because they went and created one of the best franchises of all time, the Crash Bandicoot remakes. Which then also led to the Spyro remakes, which led to a new Crash Bandicoot game, which led to Crash Team, Crash Team Racing Remaster, and Crash Team Rumble. But of course, they created Skylanders. That's right, Toys R Bob was part of all six Skylander games. Of course, they did develop the majority of them, and of course, they had their foot in the door for every single one of them. But if it wasn't for Toys R Bob pitching their idea to Activision, I wouldn't be standing here today talking about them. And it's pretty wild that 34 years ago, a company would literally change my life years later, in 2011 that is. But yeah, pretty wild that Toys R Us was around for 34 years and they created one of the greatest franchises of all time, Skylanders. Sparrow's Adventure was a huge hit, but Activision knew that the same toy marketing wouldn't work twice. So with Skylanders Giants came a new trend where every game had a new team of special Skylanders with some sort of gimmick, which made them stand out compared to older Skylanders. These are commonly known as gimmick landers. So in Giants we had the... well, you guessed it. Giants. These Skylanders were much bigger than the others and had much more health. They could also do things like picking up boulders, pulling islands towards them and much more. Swap Force introduced the Swappers who have my personal favourite gimmick. Every Swapper's figurine was split into a top half and a bottom half, which could be swapped around. This allowed the player to make over 250 different combinations if they had all 16 Swappers. Trap Team gave us the Trap Masters, who didn't have too much of a gimmick as the game focused more on the traps. But every Trap Master did have a Traptanium weapon of some sort, which allowed them to break Traptanium that's found in levels, and also do more damage to trappable villains. The Superchargers have arguably the worst gimmick, as the only unique thing about them is that they can supercharge their specific vehicle to make them more powerful, and get a visual upgrade too. Obviously they couldn't make it that they were the only ones who could use the vehicles, because that would make your older Skylanders completely useless. Imaginators actually gave us two different teams of gimmicklanders. We have the Senseis, who are essentially the most powerful Skylanders in the lore, as they are the teachers of the Skylanders seen in the previous games. They all have a unique Sky Chi attack and can also activate battle gongs. Then there are the Imaginators, which are created by the player using creation crystals. With 10 elements, 10 battle classes and a whole load of parts to collect, no Imaginator is made the same. The old Treetop Terrace area may be a reference to the Treetop Terrace in Spyro's Adventure. And at certain points throughout this level, birds resembling whiskers can be seen flying in the background. Nintendo Crossover. So the Nintendo Crossover is referring to Superchargers when they introduced Bowser and Donkey Kong as playable figures, but they could also uh, have their bases turn and you can swap them and use them as amiibo figures as well as Skylanders. There was also um, another crossover in Imaginators with Crash Bandicoot and uh, Dr. Neo Cortex, which was a Nintendo Crossover, but still in that realm of uh, different game characters crossing into Skylanders. The Darkness. The Darkness is an always present force within the Skylanders series. In Skylanders, the Darkness is what causes all evil and usually is depicted as a large mass of dark clouds. The Darkness, like I already mentioned, was a force that had no defining features or personality until Skylanders Superchargers, where the Darkness was manifested into an actual being and became the main antagonist of the game. At the end of Skylanders Superchargers, you destroy the Darkness once and for all, freeing evil from all Skylands and forcing Chaos to no longer be evil since there is no longer a force pushing him to be evil. Well, that was at least until they retconned all that in Imaginators, but we don't talk about that. The Hydra the Hydra is an evil monster and is what turned Eon into a spear in the first Skylanders game when it helped Chaos destroy the first Core of Light. It also is basically the final boss fight of Spyro's Adventure since it is what you attack and you don't really attack Chaos during the fight. After defeating the Hydra in SSA, we don't see it again until Superchargers where it makes an appearance in a sea vehicle section in a storybook explaining how evil portal masters would feed this Hydra with all the food in Skylands since it had an endless appetite and how the Skylanders took back the stolen food. A Hydra also appears in a couple episodes of Skylanders Academy, but it definitely is not the same one from the video game series. Character cards. Character cards are referring to when you actually got the physical Skylander, 
like my rattle shake here. There is a character card at the bottom of the thing. I don't know if you can see it down there, but uh, every single uh, inbox Skylander used to come with a character card, giving it stats, its abilities, all that kind of stuff. Um, and yeah, you could uh, use it. I don't really know what the, the uses for them were other than just for collection aspect, but they existed. The Ancients. The Ancients are the magical beings that created Skylands, including the Core of Light with mind magic. While the Ancients were wise beyond imagination, they were also very lazy and took extremely long naps in between creating new things in Skylands. The only Ancient we know of in the Skylander series is the Brain, and it is implied that the rest of the Ancients are dead, because in the first Imaginator's level, we see the other brains in the background that look frozen, but who knows, maybe they're just taking a long nap. Skylanders Battlecast. So, the game's senior producer of Skylanders is actually a known Hearthstone player, and he does stream on Twitch, and his name is Sancho9000. Sunburn Series 2. It is pretty well known within the Skylander series that Sunburn is the only Skylander out of the original 32 Skylanders from Spiral's Adventure that never got a repose of any type, which is pretty weird that they singled him out specifically. So many people wanted the series to Sunburn, but that is something that we will never get, and honestly I'm glad because he's not a good Skylander whatsoever, like he's really bad. Either way though, it is still really weird that Sunburn never got any type of repose, ever. Skylander Swap Force released on Xbox 360, Xbox One, PS3, PS4, Wii U, and even the Wii. Despite the Wii U being out for almost a year, most of the Skylander players were still on Wii. And as you can see from the different comparisons, the Wii version looks like Kakapui. This game looks so bad, it makes Golem look like a masterpiece. I don't understand how this game didn't make people want to upgrade to the Wii U after seeing these graphics. 3DS Lore the Skylanders games on the 3DS are completely different games than their console originals with different stories and having completely different lore. Although it isn't impossible for both 3DS games and console games to be set in the same universe. In every single 3DS game except for Superchargers Racing, the main villain is in chaos, which is honestly a breath of fresh air. In SSA, the main villain is Hector, in Giants it's Frightbeard, in Swap Force it's Count Moneybone, and in Trap Team it is the Dream Sheep. It honestly is pretty cool that they made different games for the 3DS since it gives you more Skylanders experiences to play. So in the Skylanders canon, Aurora is Eon's niece. For you guys who did not know, Aurora wanted to be a Skylander, but Eon of course, being the nervous um, grandpa that he is, not grandpa, uncle, sorry. I don't know what I'm talking about. <laughs> His uh, being the nervous uncle, of course, he did not want Aurora to be part of it. So, of course, she trained secretly under him. Yeah, so she went and learned how to become a Skylander, of course, gained all the powers you can as a Skylander, and then uh, the rest is history where she became a Skylander. And Eon said, Well, I guess, you know, like that meme is just, Well, I guess, you know. So, Aurora is Eon's niece. She trained under a bunch of them to get as powerful as she is in the series now. And of course, she's one of the best ones because, well, she's Eon's niece. So what do you expect? Am I right? Dark Skylanders lore. The other variant figures that have lore behind them are the Dark Variants, however they have a broader lore as the Dark Skylanders each have their own type of lore. Dark Spiral is a more wild and erratic and obviously dark version of Spyro that Spyro can turn into sometimes but he loses control of himself when he does. The Dark Swap Force characters have dark abilities because they were injected with petrified darkness while trying to defeat Chaos. The Dark Trap Team characters were trapped in Dark Traptanium and got the dark powers and the Dark Superchargers were also injected with petrified darkness. Unfortunately, there is no lore explaining the Dark Imaginator variants. Back in the glory days, the official Skylanders YouTube channel was a pretty great place to be. And a perfect example of this was when they released the song Christmas for Bad Guys. Not only is it actually catchy with a chompy mage rap section that goes way too hard, but it's also jam-packed with Skylanders charm with a lot of effort put into it. We also have Gangnam Style Noodles, which is certainly something. This wasn't the only Christmas song we got, as Trap Team and Superchargers also had one each. Trap Team's I still think is pretty charming, even if it didn't have as much production value as the original. And the Superchargers one is kinda just terrible. Oh well. Chaos Made the Williken. 
In Skylanders, the Willikin are wooden people that are first seen in Skylanders Giants, and a cool lore drop you get about them is that Chaos is their maker. Chaos made the Willikins because when he was a kid he had no friends, so he literally made his friends instead. Willikins seem to not really understand how bad of a guy Chaos is and seem to remember him fondly and they talk about him being their maker a lot. Legendaries are statues that come to life. In Skylanders, there is a bunch of variant versions of Skylanders, and one of those variants is the Legendary variants. Most of the variants don't have lore on how they exist, but Legendaries are different because there is an in-game explanation on how they exist. In Skylands, Skylanders battle in gladiatorial style events, and the winners get immortalized by getting magic golden statues of them. And whenever Skylands is in trouble, special portal masters can bring the statues to life and summon the Legendary Skylanders. It's kind of awesome that these variants get an explanation on how they exist. The Imaginator's Big Three. The three most expensive and rare Skylanders that are not variant figures are all from Imaginators, those Skylanders being Chompy Mage, Robo, and Wildstorm. Because of how expensive they are, they have deemed to be the Imaginator's big three. The reason why Wildstorm and Robo are very expensive is because they were the last two Skylanders ever released, so many people didn't pick them up originally. However, Chompy Mage is a different case. Chompy Mage was never actually released in stores, and you could only buy him in a bundle with a bunch of other villains online. I guess since Chompy Mage was a popular character, Activision thought a lot of people would buy this bundle of 5 villains so they could get Chompy Mage, but honestly, I never even knew this bundle even existed, so I think it was just bad marketing on their part. Anyway, real quick, I want to flex the fact that I do indeed have the big three. I know, I know, you wish you were me. Mind magic is the reason why Skylands is the way it is. The ancients used mind magic to create and conjure anything they can imagine into existence, which is a very powerful tool that could fall into the wrong hands, so the ancients sealed it away. Chaos, of course, discovers the mind magic and releases the power into Skylands again and uses it to create Doomlanders and become a Super Saiyan. The player is also able to use mind magic to create Imaginators using creation crystals made of Imaginite. Sun Dragon SSA Trailer Sun Dragon is a scrapped Skylander that eventually became Camo. Sun Dragon also appears to have gotten very far into development since for a brief section of the Spires of Venture trailer, you can see him in the background. It almost makes you wonder why Toys for Baba go through all the trouble of completely changing his character seeing how close he came to being in the game. I mean, he has a complete in-game model in SSA 2. Something even weirder, however, though, is even though it's basically been confirmed that Sun Dragon was replaced by Camo, Camo was also in the Spyro's Adventure trailer. I guess Toys for Bob really wanted Sun Dragon to be seen in the game at least, so they put him in the trailer. Something that I still find weird to this day is the legendary traps. I don't think anybody asked for them, but here they are anyway. There's three different traps that received the legendary variant, and they were all sold exclusively at Toys R Us with a small comic alongside them. You are canon. In the Skylanders series, you, yes you, are technically a canon character. In the series, NPCs will sometimes refer to you as the Portal Master because you can bring Skylanders to Skylands, something that only Portal Masters can do. So you are canon to the Skylanders series and you are also pretty important too because you are the only reason some Skylanders can get to Skylands, which means you might actually be the main character of Skylanders. Swap Force Choppy Design. So the Swap Force Choppy Design was uh, referring to the amount of hatred uh, that the new and improved Vicarious, not improved necessarily, but the new Choppy Design that Vicarious Visions, uh, a different developer for Skylanders, created for the Choppy, which gave it a lot weirder features, like specifically like, the eyes of the Choppies were very uh, strange and in general, uh, not a very well-liked design and was eventually changed back over in uh, trap team and Imaginators, but stayed the same design in Superchargers as well, which was also developed by Vicarious Visions. Sidekicks Before the minis, there were the sidekicks, and they were not released like regular Skylanders, but were a part of a Frito-Lay promotion. The sidekicks were also not playable characters and would only assist your Skylander technically making them a magic item. 
Sidekicks were in both SSA and Giants, then Entrap Team got turned into minis. If you use a sidekick character in later games, they do work as minis. Honestly, I thought sidekicks were fine the way they were and didn't need to make them mini sconders. I would have rather had an actual core sconder in Trap Team than in place of the minis. So Skylanders, when they first debuted in E3, had some exclusive figures. One of them being the E3 version of Spyro. Just a regular version of Spyro that came in the box saying E3 exclusive. However, there was a Chrome version of him released with that, and that wasn't the first, that was the first, but it wasn't the last E3 exclusive of Skylanders that exists. We also have the Bronze Hot Dog, we have the exclusive E3 Hot Streak, you know, the classic one. There's a lot of games expos available out there, supposedly there's this Ruby Red Dune Bug I didn't even know existed. That was from a Gamescom, so... But for E3, three biggest ones, of course, is the Chrome Plated Spyro, or of course, the original Spyro himself, and of course, the Bronze Hot Dog, and the biggest one, the E3 Hot Streak. Probably one of the coolest looking vehicles, which really, when the Supercharged is racing, he looks just like a regular vehicle. I don't have that one, but he has different wheels, according to in the game, and he's an E3 exclusive character figure, and he looks amazing. It's one of the coolest figures they have for sure. You could only get him at E3 if you attended, and I think it was only if you were like part of the press. So it's really hard to find these, but you can buy them online, but they're not cheap. From what I looked up today, the Chrome Spyro is like at least $600, and it's not even in mint condition packaging. Chopper was supposed to be a giant. Even if his name wasn't Chopper, he was originally developed to be the tech giant of Skylanders Giants. His design would be a big T-Rex that very much resembles Chopper. Apparently, since T-Rex are more horizontal than vertical, his character didn't fit on the portal with other Skylanders, so they had to scrap him for someone that was more thinner. But he would find his way into Trap Team, except a lot smaller this time around. Skylanders Flash Games so what I was able to find is that there was a lot of Skylanders Flash games and a lot of which are not currently still available to play. The ones that I could find on Google was there's a bunch of Skylanders puzzles that are just online puzzles. They're pretty self-explanatory. But there's also one game where it tells you a different combination of Swap Force figures and you have to kind of get it right. So obviously you have to know the swappers names and it is quite easy if you have played the games and know all the swappers. So you just have to mix match the combinations as it tells you to. For Riley. Zap Series 2 Wap Pat was called For Riley and was made as a dedication to a four-year-old Skylanders fan named Riley who unfortunately died of cancer. His favorite Skylander was Zap, so Toys for Rob named one of Zap's attacks after him, which is really sweet. Chompies are blue in Skylanders 3DS. Blue Chompies in the console series of Skylanders are called Crunchers, which will not just chomp on a Skylander, but hold on to you. But the standard colors of Chompies on the console version is green. But for some reason, in the 3DS versions of SSA and Giants, the standard Chompy colors are blue. I assume this was to make the 3DS games feel even more different from the console games, even though they are already completely different games. Kirby and Peach. So it's actually quite interesting to me that Vicarious Visions actually considered Princess Peach, Kirby, and not only them, but also Star Fox as Skylanders for Skylander Superchargers. I think that these would have been very cool figures, and they would definitely probably be the most interesting Superchargers, even though we have Bowser and Donkey Kong. Having those other noteworthy figures would have been really cool, and I think it also would have made the game maybe a little bit more popular, including more Nintendo figures. Portal Owner's Pack the Portal Owners Pack were mini starter packs made for both Giants and Imaginators. In the Giants Portal Owners Pack, you had Tree Rex and the Skylanders Giants game, while Imaginators had the Fire Creation Crystal and the Imaginators games. These packs were made for people that already had portals from previous games that didn't want to put all the money in the starter pack because for both Giants and Imaginators, new portals were not made and just copied portals from older games were put into their games. I would never actually buy one of these because I want all the starter pack Skylanders, but if you're just trying to play Giants or Imaginators and don't really care about the collection aspect, then it's probably a good purchase. 
When it comes to promotional scoundrels material, the most infamous is the Frito-Lay naming contest. In early 2014, Frito-Lay teamed up with Activision. They created a contest where fans could submit names for three potential Trap Team Skylanders, those being who we now know as High Five, Batspin and Flipwreck. The best submitted name was chosen for each of the three Skylanders, and then a vote was made on which Skylander to bring into Trap Team. Even though High Five was the winner of the contest, Batspin and Flipwreck were also brought into the game as a surprise. Shapeshifters Shapeshifters was the original name for Skylander Swap Force and had a slightly different gimmick idea. As we all know, the gimmick for Swap Force was swap tops and bottoms of Skylanders, but Shapeshifters had a more mix and match type of gimmick. You could swap heads, arms, and legs. We only know three Skylanders from this game and those are Aftershot, Kraken, and Breezewing. So the original Swap Force gimmick was even more swappy I guess than Swap Force. Also, Aftershock, one of the original Shapeshifter characters would eventually become Fist Bump. Sniper. Sniper is a scrapped character design from Skylanders Giants, which was basically just a blaster troll. It's basically the same exact design as a blaster troll, except for a few different uh, aspects, and also was planned to be a Skylander, which is interesting because it would be the second troll character to be a Skylander, um, Boomer being the other obvious one. Drill X Body Disappears during the Drill X boss fight in Giants, in the Wii versions only, there can be a glitch that happens when Drill X goes into his stage 3, and for some reason it causes the top of Drill X's body to disappear. Weird. I guess this is the average Skylanders Wii experience. After beating Chaos in Skylander Superchargers and supposedly beating the Darkness, it's teased that you beat the game by showing you credits before the Darkness comes back for the final fight sequence. During those fake credits, an original song called Supercharge With Love plays but gets cut off. The full version of the song plays during the real credits, and it's actually pretty catchy. Max Imaginator Level In Skylanders Imaginators, the Imaginators level is determined by how many unique senseis you have. The Imaginator base level with no senseis is actually only 15, but with the 31 non-variant senseis, plus the 13 in-game variant senseis, and the 5 chase variant senseis, the level cap for your Imaginator is 64. The original level cap was actually supposed to be level 65, but because Heartbreaker Buckshot was never released, the level cap is only at 64, which is a kind of a weird number if you ask me. Bark Demon Skystones In Skylanders Giants, most enemies have a Skystone, and the Bark Demon is one of them. However, you cannot collect it. NPCs you play against have the Bark Demon Skystone and will use it against you, but you yourself cannot collect it, which is extremely weird since Bark Demons is the only example of this in the game. Usually when you defeat an NPC in a battle of Skystones, they will give you some sort of Skystone, or you can buy a Skystone from the shop in Skylanders Giants, but the Bark Demon is not an available one. Maybe the developers didn't have the time for it, I don't know. Thwomps in Skylanders Early in Bowser's development for Skylanders Superchargers, he was supposed to have an attack where he could summon Thwomps. Honestly, I think it really sucks that they didn't go with this attack choice. It would have been really awesome to see Bowser just be able to summon the Thwomps, and it would have been really cool to see them make their way into the Skylanders series. Gogurt Commercial during the Skylanders Trap Team release, Gogurt and Skylanders partnered up and made the Skylanders Gogurt commercial. And for some reason, these Skylanders Gogurts lit up in the dark. And the Gogurt commercial wallop also somehow eats himself while he's eating the Gogurt. It's a pretty weird commercial if you ask me. Spyro, you have returned. In the first level of Skylanders Spyro's Adventure, if you use any of the starter pack Skylanders, once you enter the level, Hugo will say their name. So he will say Spyro you have returned, Trigger Happy you have returned, or Gilgren you have returned. However, if you use a non-starter pack Skylander, Hugo just says Skylander you have returned. This is one of the few times in a Skylanders game where an NPC will say your Skylanders name. Happy Birthday Ben Starcast. So, Master Starcast was already an Imaginator, but this is a variant, and this is the Happy Birthday Ben Starcast. And believe it or not, this was actually made for Tom Brady's son, Ben. And this was like a birthday party kind of giveaway 
goodie bag type thing. Kind of weird, but also kind of cool. I don't think I've heard of anything similar for any other video game, and that's just something pretty unique. And if you get your hands on this, that's probably pretty special because I don't know many people that have it. Also, if it helps make your decision whether you want to fork over your life savings for this figure or not, it just shows up as a normal star casting game, so I don't think it's very worth it. Fiesta in Skylanders Academy Fiesta was a planned character to be introduced in Skylanders Academy and would have been the only supercharger ever seen in the series, but was cut because of budget reasons, which seems kind of suspect because you would think Activision Blizzard would have enough money to add one new character. Skylander Boy and Gold Credit Song This is referring to at the end of Skylander's Imaginators when uh, a song made by Skylander Boy and Girl plays in the beginning of the Skylander's Imaginators credits. It's the uh, Imaginator creation song, the song they made for Imaginators. That's the, what the song is. I don't remember exactly what it's called. but Uncredited Voice Actors Due to the Performance Matters game voice actor strike from 2016 to 2017, Activision left many voice actors and imaginators uncredited during the credits role. Some actors were completely recasted because of the strike too. Right here is a list of voice actors that were not credited in imaginators and the characters they voiced. So one thing that I like about the newer games when it comes to superchargers, the biggest thing is instant Skyriders. There's instant food fight, instant spitfire, instant hot streak. Of course, any of the vehicles and the characters you can use in the game, they're instant characters. So what that means is if you don't physically have the character that you need for it, so say if you're going to do a sky racing level, you can use an instant Skylander that'll just appear in the game for that one time only. You don't keep levels, you don't keep records, anything like that. It's just a random figure that you just kind of have in the game that's just sitting there for you. Very common in superchargers racing and imaginators racing because of course, People who don't have the vehicles, how are you going to race, right? And of course, I think on the mobile version of Trap Team, there's an instant food fight you can use because then what if you got you downloaded the app and then you didn't have any figures? Well, you can play it because you have food fight, but you can't play as any of your other Skylanders. I don't think you need the portal or anything either. So with the instant characters, it was really cool because then you don't need to collect everything. You can just play the game as is. So if you bought the game used and didn't have any figures, at least you weren't completely out of luck. And that's one thing I really like about the Instant Skylanders. iDragon The iDragon is actually called the Cyclops Dragon, and they were introduced in Trap Team. Even though the iDragons have a pretty cool design and have some interesting attacks, they are only ever seen in one level, and that level is the Lair of the Golden Queen. They're also one of the regular enemies with the highest amount of health in the series. There's a joke that Flynn makes in Skylanders Giants that goes like this. So the onboard nav system now says we're in some place called Albuquerque. <laughs> we're definitely gonna need that compass. This joke was made famous by the old Looney Tune show as one of Bugs Bunny's running gags. Mm. Say, you know, I knew I should have made a left turn at Albuquerque. The joke itself originated all the way back in 1926 as the US Route 66 that ran across the country and actually intersected itself in downtown Albuquerque, New Mexico. Thanks to this, a lot of people ended up indeed taking the wrong turn. Willikin speaking sound effect. Every single time before you speak to a Willikin, they will always wind up before you talk. The detail adds to them being wooden machines and I really like the attention to detail. Welcome to the Island of the Willikin. Even though the Skylanders themselves are technically toys, it didn't end there. Because when Skylanders first teamed up with McDonald's, we got some slightly less valuable toys, but toys nonetheless. These toys must have been pretty well received because this partnership lasted for quite some time. There were McDonald's toys when Giants came out, when Swap Force came out, when Trap Team came out, when Superchargers came out, yeah. There were a lot of McDonald's toys. Even though most of it clearly is just cheap plastic, I'm sure there's a lot of people who find these toys super nostalgic. SKM66 Speakers Skylanders got speakers made for them, and they were called the SKM66s, and there is a Stealth Elf one, an Eruptor one, and a Popfizz one. Yeah, these look goofy as heck, honestly. 
I don't know who thought these were good ideas because they are not. I mean, just what are these? Okay, guys, what's up? Little little post production gamer TV here. This might be not professional, but uh, I just want to report there is a fourth one. I found a Wrecking Ball SK M66 speaker. I don't know why it didn't come up when I uh, was first looking up these speakers, but I, I found it when I was getting the images for the video. There is a fourth one. I do not want to spread misinformation. There is a fourth speaker. See you guys. Lightcore Pop Fizz character change. The Lightcore Pop Fizz on the Giants poster and the one in real life are two completely different character models. The one on the poster shows Pop Fizz holding a potion behind his head and one in front of him. He is holding both by the tips of the potion bottle. The real life one, he is only holding one and he's holding it up in the air. For whatever reason, his prototype design is shown on the poster instead of his actual design. And I don't really know how this got past Activision. It seems like something they could have easily fixed. While Crypt King fits really well with the Trap Masters, he was originally planned to be introduced much earlier than that. He was actually meant to be a giant, but for whatever reason he was scrapped but thankfully brought back two games later. A common misconception is that he was replaced by Eyebrow, but he was actually going to be the magic giant which then Genie got the role of instead. Origami Spyro before Skylanders or Spyro's Kingdom was in development, there were a couple ideas floating around for what new Spyro game would come out. One of those was a gritty realistic Spyro game, a tiny Spyro game, and an origami Spyro game where he could take shape of different things. And of all these three ideas, an origami Spyro does seem to be the best one. So in Giants, there was a very special boss that you fought later in the game called Drillex. Everybody love this character, not because he had the catchiest song of all time, well actually that was definitely why, but he was a very enjoyable villain. And you fought him once and that was kind of it, you don't see any more from him and you're saying to yourself, okay, weird, that's it. However, he did come back in a game, it's a game a lot of people forgot about though, except I only just recently played it myself, with Grill X. So Drill X came back, released his own barbecue level. In, and the Wii Superchargers racing game, which is just a standard racing game, and he returned into Grill X. So he's now a barbecue chef. He has his own barbecue level, and I'd eat there. So Drill X is still around. If you guys are wondering, even though you defeat him, it doesn't mean he's completely dead. He just went into a different culinary field. Literally, he makes food now. And I mean, what better person to grill food than a robot? They can literally do it themselves, to be honest. So yeah, Drill X is still alive, but he's now Grill X. Soul Gems change in Swap Force. In Spyro's Adventure, Water Skinders could swim in the water, but Double Trouble, Zap, and Stump Smash could also swim because of their Soul Gem abilities. However, in Swap Force, the ability to swim was removed, so those three Skinders had their Soul Gems changed. They are the only three Skinders to have an ability changed later in a game. Giants are the first Skylanders. This is referring to the fact that in the beginning of Skylanders Giants, where uh, you first go into the uh, the time of the ancients or time of the giants, which is the first chapter in Skylanders Giants, when it says Skylands 10,000 years ago, uh, obviously saying that the giants were the first Skylanders to ever come, come from, because uh, it was the time of the giants. Quadruped Imaginators. Toys R Us had a planned Imaginator Zero 2, which would have added new senseis, new levels, and new Imaginator classes. And one of those classes would have had a Quadruped Imaginator. We know one of these classes had to be a Quadruped because software engineer Robert Leyland stated that a sequel or Year 2 for Imaginators would have been about making Quadruped Imaginators, including dragons. I really wish we could have seen that happened because I would have loved to make a dragon imaginator. We had plans for doing it. I think we had had um, the idea was we would do if if we did imaginators two, it would probably be um, uh, it would have been four legged critters. So it would have included actually I, I, that I spoke misspoke earlier. Uh, that would have included dragons and unicorns and um, uh, centaurs and all uh, all of the four legged things would would have been added. Um, we already. VV Windup. 
So this is actually VV Ind Up, and it is actually a variant of Wind Up. It was never actually put into any of the Skylanders games, but it was used and tested in Skylanders Swap Force. The W in the name Wind Up is replaced with two V's, and this is obviously the abbreviation of Vicarious Visions, and this is the main developers for the game Skylanders Swap Force. Uh, despite being an unused variant because it was never actually implemented into the series, he's fully playable and the coding still exists, so you can still use him on NFC cards. I think this is pretty interesting, and he also has a lot of health. His health is increased to 4,011, and this is his max level of level 20. He's an insanely overpowered Skylander, and if you want to do a solo run, he's a perfect figure to do it with. Metal Mage. Metal Mage was originally supposed to be an Aerosconder that was going to be in either Giants or Trap Team, but eventually got switched to an enemy. Despite being in the franchise for a while, he's only ever seen in one level in Trap Team. If Metal Mage would have become a Skylander, he would have been the first Skylander with metal abilities to not be in the tech element. Chill was the new water element Skylander introduced in Skylander's Giants. As you can see from her official artwork, her lips are blue, which also shows up on some Series 1 figures. But the first releases of this figure actually have purple lips. There were rumors of figures that had red lips and even no lipstick on, but for the most part, your Series 1 Chill either has blue lips or purple lips. Bull Train Bulltrain is a scrap Skylander that was probably in the tech element, and he has quite the awesome design if you ask me, with metal horns, the bull rank, and he even has hooves for hands. I mean, he doesn't just look like a scrap Skylander, but a complete one. The one odd gamer who you should check out was able to find him in the game files and show us some of his gameplay. He had a full attack system and a full movement system, so he got pretty far into development. Probably in a lot of other games, Bulltrain would have made the final cut, but because of the limited roster of superchargers, he had to be cut, but honestly, I I would trade High Volt for Bull Train. He looks that awesome. Mags is a dude. In the expansion pack level for Skylanders Trap Team Sunscraper Spire, the villain of the level Luminous disguises himself as Mags. At the end of the level, he reveals himself, but a lot of people mistook this as Mags was actually Luminous the entire time when this isn't true. He only disguised as Mags for one level. Mags is still a good guy in the game. This entry also refers to a line in the Skylander Boy and Girl rap about the light element where Skylander Dad yells repeatedly, Mags is a dude. Mags is a dude. Mags is a dude. Luminous was a chick. Mary Ball been fooled. Mags is a dude. Matt Mags is a dude. Luminous was a chick. Mary Ball been fooled. The Ancients are the developers. I'm not exactly sure what this one is referring to. However, if I had to guess, it would be about a theory that uh, the Ancients and Skylanders, we don't see any Ancients other than the brain in Skylanders Imaginators, but that the Ancients that were kept being referred to in Skylanders uh, actually refer to the developers of the games that make the games. Obviously, they create everything in Skylands because that was what the Ancients were said to do. So um, the Ancients are the developers, basically, because we never really saw any of them and we never really saw like, you know, the, actually what they were, what people were referring to when they meant the Ancients, so. Legendary Starter Pack. The two main variants in each game for Skylanders were always the Legendary and Dark variants. Every game after Giants Dark variants got a special starter pack with all the regular Skylanders in the starter pack as Dark variants plus one extra Dark variant character. But the other main variant Legendary never got one Skylander starter pack. However, a lot of people thought there was going to be a Legendary starter pack in Trap Team though, because there was a leaked picture of a receipt for a pre-order that said XB1 Sky Legendar that was $75, which was the price for a starter pack but these images must have been fake because there was never any legendary Skylander starter packs traps and trap master weapons got their coloring from a special die that toys for bob used and since there were so many figures being made they actually ran out of this die mainly the blue that's why there are some traps out there that don't have much color or even straight up clear it's not from sun damage as some believed was the case rather toys for bob just running out of resources fortnite alien artifact 
I don't know too much about Fortnite, but Fortnite added alien artifacts that were around the map during a certain time period, and you could collect them for a challenge. And let me just say, these look very familiar. I mean, if you flip these upside down, they are literally just creation crystals. I'm not saying Fortnite copied Skanders, but I'm saying Fortnite copied Skanders. I mean, come on, the resemblance is too close. I guess shout out to Fortnite for remembering Skylanders. When you have a franchise as big as Skylanders, you are bound to see some people selling fake figurines. Or, a better name for it, bootlegs. And while there aren't as many of these as you'd think, the ones I could find were pretty damn funny. I would unironically spend my entire life savings on this slam bam. He's just perfect. Smash Hit was a koala. In Smash Hit's final design, it is said that he is a war supio, which is obviously a made-up creature. But in concept art for him, he was not only originally a life skander, but he was a koala, which would have made him the first marsupial skander ever. And honestly, I think that this version of koala probably just looked too cute, and they wanted to make him look a little bit more dirty because he rides vehicles. That's a skander ability, he can ride vehicles. However, since his design was changed, Crash Bandicoot is now the first and only marsupial skylander. So when I first played Giants, the first thing that came to mind to me was this looks the same as Bowser's Adventure. And of course, it's not like they were going to branch out and do a completely graphical upgrade, even though they literally did in the next game, and change everything up. But for Giants, to me, it felt like it was DLC. Giants was like what they couldn't cram into the original Spires Adventure and they pumped out this game real quick because they already had it onto the side. And there's like, oh, let's put big Skylanders in it. And then the Giants didn't really do much in future games. They had one chest in Swap Force, if I'm not mistaken. That was kind of it. But yeah, very weird that Giants to me always feels like DLC. It wasn't a, it wasn't a brand new game for me. It felt like it was something that I already played, but it was just some extra content. And it didn't even feel like they maxed out the Skylanders. They did two of each element, but one was a Giant, one was a Core, when every other game, they did multiple separate superchargers. They went kind of back to the formula there, but that was different. They gave us a brand new Skylander. And then of course they came back with Series 2 Skylanders, but that was literally upgrading Skylanders you already had. And they re-released almost every single one of them. So, I don't know. Giants always felt like a DLC to me. It's not the most enjoyable game when it comes to everything that it has, so I feel like it was the leftovers of Spyro's Adventure that they decided, we can turn this to a game, I guess. I mean, they literally had the formula for it right there. And then Swap Force came out a year later, it was completely different and a million times better. So. It's always going to feel like a DLC to me, even though a lot of people disagree. But if you think about it, I'm kind of right. Just... Trap Team Commercial Live. In the commercials for Trap Team, they say there are over 60 new Skylanders when this is just straight up a lie because there's only 57 new Skylanders. Build the ultimate Trap Team with over 60 Skylanders to collect and more than 40 villains to capture. There are 60 plus Skylanders if you count variants, but I feel like that's a cop out for them saying there's over 60 Skylanders if that is what they were doing. And villains don't count either because in the commercials they also said there were 40 trappable villains, so they weren't counting trappable villains as Skylanders. I don't know what happened here if they just lied or if they forgot or they are somehow counting variant skylanders or if they just thought 57 was close enough to round up to 60. chop chop daddy we've already discussed in the iceberg how crypt king was supposed to be a giant but something interesting is that crypt king's beta name for skylanders giants was chop chop daddy now people said for a long time that crypt king and chop chop might be related and a lot of reasons why people say this is because of the beta name for him being chop chop daddy i mean his name is literally chop chop's daddy uh we never get any real confirmation what the relationship is but a lot of people theorize that crypt king is chop chop's father ready player one cameo on the ready player one wiki there are said to be five skylanders that make a cameo in ready player one those being gilgrunt drobat magna charge hoodsicle and torch which is a pretty weird combination of skylanders to be in a group you'd ask me now i've watched the movie and gone back over and over again and i cannot find these cameos so if you can please tell me where they're at that would be much appreciated but then again maybe the ready player one fan wiki isn't a place to find accurate information regarding cameos unknown trailer traps 
Near the end of the Trap Team trailer, we got to see some traps that are unknown and never made it to the actual game. One of them looks like a hand life trap, which does not exist. The other two look like unfinished torch traps, a fire one and a tech one. There is a air screamer trap that doesn't have hands. We actually see a dark spider trap, which does exist, but the dark element wasn't revealed at this time, which is funny that they put in the trailer. And finally, there are two traps that have nothing close to a design that made it into the game. They are just traps with a ball on top of them and there's an air magic one. They kind of look like the World Cup trophy, I guess. Maybe that was the design. 14 English SSA Skylanders. In Skylanders Spyro's adventure, all 32 Skylanders, instead of having a catchphrase, spoke some sort of different gibberish language. But while developing the game, Toy Survive eventually decided to give 14 Skylanders the ability to speak English. These 14 Skylanders would sometimes speak their gibberish battle cry on the portal, but other times they would say their actual catchphrase. Skylanders not being able to speak English only lasted for one game, because in Giants, every Skylander had a catchphrase where they spoke an actual language. Skylanders Story Videos Originally, all Skylanders were supposed to have a story video play when placing them on the Portal of Power for the first time to explain what they are and their abilities. Obviously, this was scrapped, and if you ask me, it was probably for the best. I mean, if these story videos were like a minute long or something like that, they could get pretty annoying to see every single time you got a new Skylander. Skylanders Giants Animation Test the original inspiration for Giants was a test that Toys for Bob did. They used a Skylander from Spyro's Adventure and scaled it up 300 times and that completely broke the game. This gave them the inspiration to make bigger Skylanders, so they made the Giants. Skylanders Swap Force Missing Assets Because of the hardware limitations of the Wii console, the graphics or swap force had to be scaled down quite a bit. The game was scaled down so much that, first of all, it looks terrible, and it got scaled down so much that some of the assets in the game are entirely missing because it couldn't handle them. Like the fog in Frostfest Mountains, it is completely gone in the Wii version. Another reason why Swap Force Wii is one of the worst gaming experiences ever. How did the superchargers get to Earth? In every Skylanders game up to Superchargers, in the cutscene before the game starts, they explain to you how the Skylanders got to Earth in toy form. In SSA, Chaos's Hydra destroys the core light which banishes the Skylanders and sends them to Earth. The Giants are banished to Earth because of a power burst from the Iron Fist of Arcus. The Swap Force are banished to Earth because they got stuck in a volcanic eruption and the Trap Team got banished because of the explosion from the Cloudcracker Prison and it sends the Trap Team and the Traps to Earth. But in Superchargers, there is no explanation as to how the superchargers got sent to earth and it still remains a mystery they probably just got tired of talking about how the scoundrels got banished in every single pre-game cutscene banana and koopa element Hammerstein Bowser and Turbocharged Donkey Kong, kind of like Chaos, were supposed to originally have custom elements just for them. Donkey Kong would have had a custom banana element, and Bowser would have had a custom Koopa element. Then Vicarious Visions realized that that's kind of a stupid idea and scrapped the idea entirely. Or maybe it would have been too hard to make a banana Skylander base for Donkey Kong, I don't know. Series 4 Cinder Besides Gilgrunt, there was another planned Series 4 Skylander and Trap Team, and that was Cinder. There's actually a linked picture of Series 4 Cinder, and it shows her having silver armor on her wings and back, and looks like she has slightly pinker wings than before. It does make sense that there was at least one more planned Series 4 Skylander, because it is very odd that there's only one Series 4 Skylander. However, because for whatever reason, Undead was one of the three elements that got cut short one Skylander and trapped him, Series 4 Cinder was never able to be realized. Trapped Villains Shrink a couple of the bigger villains in Trap Team will get smaller after you trap them. Some of those villains are Shrednaught, most of Doom Raiders, and Trolling Thunder. I don't know why they did this though, since there are plenty of big Skylanders in the series, and it kind of sucks since you already get a limited time with the villains, and now they're smaller too. I'm not sure why there's so much information on the early production of Giants specifically, but I'm not complaining because we get to see cool stuff like Prototype Bouncer. We have a full clear picture of the prototype's figurine here, and even if the final bouncer has a lot more personality in his design, this one still looks really sick. Old Imaginator's Packaging 
One of the artists that worked for Imaginators released some concept images of the packaging that Imaginators was originally going to have. Something interesting is, in these pictures, there is a stealth elf in one of these packages, which could mean that the Coruscanters were going to be in Imaginators, but they eventually got removed later in development. It also shows that Creation Crystals would have been cone-shaped packs, which is a very weird design choice if you ask me. Scrapped Imaginator Levels Imaginators has two scrapped levels that we know of, one of them looking like they got very far into development. One is a port town on the water that looks like it has a troll restaurant in it as well, and the other one is a second dragon themed level for the game. But this one looks like it might have been taken place at night or some darker place since the assets have lanterns on them. Lightcore Barbella Krakatoa, who eventually was found to be fake, was a leading reason on why people believed in Imaginator Zero 2 happening, but another screenshot that was found that hasn't really been 100% disproven to be real is Lycor Barbella. Now, this screenshot is pretty grainy and could very well be fake, but something about this to me at least makes me think this is real. Although, it would have been kind of weird to bring back Lycors and Imaginator since they hadn't been there in the series since Swap Force, so it is very likely that this is also fake. The Darkness is an Alien In the backstory for The Darkness, it states that the reason The Darkness is here is because the Ancients accidentally opened a rift to another world and out came The Darkness. Which means that The Darkness isn't even from Skylands despite him being the biggest bad guy in the entire series and also, it means The Darkness is technically an alien to Skylands. Traps Mind Control Villains while it is just a theory, it would make a lot of sense that traps mind control villains. I mean, one second the villains are trying to defeat you, and then you just put them into a small crystal trap, and they're good. It makes no sense. In the pre-game cutscene for Trap Team, it shows villains in Cloudcracker Prison, which is also made out of Trap Team, but they don't seem like they are all of a sudden good in the prison, even though it's made out of the same material as traps. Maybe when the traps got sent to Earth, they got some sort of power to mind control villains. Or maybe Eon or one of the other people in Skylanders made it to where traps mind control villains. I don't know. Rise of the Giants Rise of the Giants is the beta name for Skylanders. I can honestly see why it eventually got shortened to just Giants though, because every single Skylanders title besides Rise of Adventure is not too long and Rise of the Giants might have just been too hard to fit under the Skylanders logo. Blastertron Paradox By trapping Blastertron in the future and bringing him back to the past, you start a paradox. Blastertron from the future now exists any time before he was made. This basically makes an infinite time loop because now Blastertron is back in the past and since he's a robot, he will live to see the events of the level that he is from, the future Skylands. But since he lives in that time somewhere along the line, he gets turned evil again. However, he gets trapped because the Skylanders come from the past to rescue Skylands and take him back to the past again to live out the 10,000 years that just happened again and again, an infinite time. Loop. Also, another paradox that starts is his creation because since he gets taken back before time he is made, he could never have been actually created. Since he is back in the past, no one can create him in the future because he already exists. Maybe Skylanders should just stick to not doing time travel. Skylander Spiral's Adventure Arcade Machine what you're looking at right now is probably the most rare piece of Skylanders related merchandise out there because to my knowledge there is only one of its kind. The Spyro's Adventure Arcade Machine. Apparently this picture was taken at the 30th anniversary of Toys for Bob and they commissioned an arcade machine that will play Spyro's Adventure. Now to what extent I don't know. In the picture it looks like they are playing battle mode but my question is can this play the actual story mode of SSA? We will probably never know. Nightfall Wave 1 Scandal if you bought Nightfall in Wave 1 of Skylanders Superchargers, you probably know what I'm talking about. But in Superchargers Wave 1, Nightfall was one of the characters that was released. However, most of the Nightfalls, if not all the Nightfalls were released, were defective. And Superchargers software could not recognize the Nightfall character, and she could not be used in game. This called Activision to recall Nightfall characters, and if you bought a faulty Nightfall and sent it to Activision, they would send you a Nightfall that worked. Activision eventually released an update for the game that made Nightfall work in the game, and even the Nightfalls that didn't work, worked in the game after the update. The only other figure this ever really happened to was the Platinum Treasure Chest in Giants, but at least it wasn't a playable figure. This is the only Skander that Activision has ever had to recall, and it makes you wonder what happened here. Skylanders Elemental Wheel 
In Skyner's Ring of Heroes, an elemental wheel was released to try to help you figure out what elements are weaker or stronger against other elements. On the wheel, it looks like light and dark kind of cancel each other out. Magic and fire are strong against air, air is strong against life, and earth. Earth is strong against tech and water, tech is strong against fire and magic, magic is strong against undead, undead is strong against life and earth. Life is strong against water, and water is strong against fire. I don't know if in PvP this actually works, if water is strong against fire and stuff like that, but at least in Skyner's Ring of Heroes, this is how elements work against each other. Chompy on r slash place. R slash place was a subreddit where users could paint one pixel with any color on a 1 million pixel sized canvas, but you had to wait 5 minutes to place another one. The Skyner's community was able to draw a Chompy on r place, kind of immortalizing it, which is pretty cool if you ask me. The Origins of the Archeans. The Origins of the Archeans is a mystery and was lost to time. Even though the Archeans are a high-tech society and are very high-functioning, no one knows where they truly came from. Maybe the secrets to the Origins of the Archeans is stored below them because Archeans tend to forget things underneath them. Released Prototypes as you can see from these two images, there are some released prototypes for Skanders. My guess is that people have these Skanders, have a friend or a family member that worked for Toys R Bob or Activision. But something really cool actually that I haven't had the chance to talk about is someone whose dad was a producer for Skanders sent me a picture of two of the three Skanders leaked for Skanders Imaginators Year 2 prototype characters. These are very cool. It isn't like 100% that these are real prototypes, but I would assume they are real. And this is obviously really nice to see new characters that we unfortunately Never got to see his figures. For some reason, however, the third Skander in the leaked year two for Imaginators, the one that is riding a wolf, does not have a leaked prototype figure out. Gigantus is dead. Gigantus is an NPC only seen in the first level of Skander's Giants and helps you learn some of your giant abilities like lifting boulders and jumping into holes in the ground. However, after he jumps through a hole in the ground himself, he is never seen again. Since the hole in the ground leads to a chompy pit, some people have theorized that Gigantus met his demise to these chompies and is dead. My personal opinion though is that Toys R Bob didn't really have a use for him after telling you some details about giants so they just pushed him to the side, never to be seen again. Hothead Homicide In Hothead's backstory, there is a story about how Hothead discovered magic oil on an island in Skylands and decided to cool off in it. When he jumped in the oil, his plunge caused an entire island to explode. The oil explosion gave Hothead his powers, but that's not what the entry is about. Almost every island in Skylands is inhabited by some creatures, and Hothead single-handedly just destroyed an entire island. So most likely, Hothead just killed a bunch of creatures on that island, just because he wanted to cool off. Blastermind is related to Chaos. One of the defining looks of Chaos is, well, he's short, and his forehead symbol, and the black lining around his eyes, and, well, he's bald too. Blastermind basically shares all those details too, except he doesn't have the forehead symbol, although it could just be hiding underneath his helmet. Chaos and Blastermind are also both extremely short. This theory, though, is probably untrue, however, since Blastermind has no nose, unlike Chaos, and he's, well, purple, and Chaos is definitely not purple. They kind of do look the same, though. Creepy Pastas. This entry is a reference to all the many creepypastas that have been made for Skylanders. Creepypastas are horror stories that are posted on the internet. Creepypastas became very popular in the early 2010s, about the same time Skylanders was popular, so obviously there are a couple of creepypastas out there for Skylanders. One of my favorite creepypastas I found though while researching this video is about someone who found a Skylander that never existed and that Skylander took control of them. So kind of like a reverse Skylanders effect. Looking back though, most creepypastas I used to think were scary when I was younger are actually pretty dumb. But if you want a different form of Skylanders fan-made content, I guess you could say, maybe the Skylanders creepypastas are for you. Who made the Archeans? The Archeans are a race of robots, which means someone had to make them. Despite the fact that Archeans do seem to be conscious and aware of their actions, someone had to make them, the robots. My guess is as to who made the Archeans is the ancients made the Archeans to protect Skans and gave the Archeans consciousness as well. And then they made the Archeans forget who made them so that secret wouldn't get out there. Most likely we'll never truly know who created the Archeans. Chaos is a clone. 
During Skylanders Imaginator's release, Activision released a Chaos Skylander because playing as Chaos was something the fans always wanted. However, Chaos is still the villain in Imaginator, so they had to make some sort of excuse as to why Chaos is now fighting for the Skylanders. So they said he was a clone made by Chaos himself that defected to the side of the Skylanders, which is a pretty weak backstory if you ask me. But if Chaos was able to make a clone of himself that looks identical to him, who knows if he even beat the real Chaos at the end of Imaginators. Maybe he was just another clone. There's a theory out there that the real Chaos is still out there and you just captured one of his many clones. Maybe he has an army of clones now. If they ever picked up Skylanders again and they wanted to go off the lore of the series, I believe this is the logic they would use to explain why Chaos is the main villain in the game once again. Chaos was in the magic element. The first time we ever see the Chaos element is in Trap Team. With Chaos being the main villain of the Skylanders series, Activision probably thought that he shouldn't be grouped with any other villains, but there are a lot of sources that proves this originally was not the case. First of all, the magic element for some reason doesn't have a Doom Raider, when every other element does. This basically almost enough is proof that Chaos was probably planned to be the magic element Doom Raider at some point because magic does fit in the most out of the 10 original elements. Another thing that also supports the theory that Chaos was going to be the magic element is in Trap Team if you go to his stats and then switch back to the game real quick, the magic element symbol will appear in the element columns around the academy. The element columns switch to whatever element the Skylander is that's nearby them. So when Chaos goes by them, when you switch to stats and back in the game, it appears to be magic. This basically pretty much proves he was probably going to be magic at one point. Blobbers is the most powerful being in Skylands. In the Lost Imaginite Mines, Blobbers obtains a very powerful Imaginite Crystal that can grant any wish in Skylands. Blobbers has basically been abused his entire career in Skylanders, and his wish is he's going to make Skylanders 2.0 and make it a better and safer place. However, before he's able to harness the power of the Imaginite, the security system for the mine gets alerted, and he isn't able to use his wish. But for a couple seconds, Blobbers was the most powerful being in all of Skylands, and the fate of Skylands stood in the palm of his hands. Pretty crazy stuff if you ask me. When did the Swap Force get banished? So during the opening cutscene of Swap Force, they explain to you how the Swap Force got their swapping powers and it's because of a magical volcano that erupts every 100 years. However, Eon does kind of a poor job of explaining when this actually happened. The wording he uses is during the last eruption to explain when the Swap Force got banished to Earth. But this can mean two things, either the last eruption which happened sometime in the 2010s or he means the last eruption which happened in the 1910s. The main theory as to why the Swap Force got banished in the 1910s is because in the game the volcano erupts at the end end of the game, which means the last eruption had to be 100 years ago, but the volcano erupts under some pretty weird circumstances, so we're not for sure. But the Swap Force, according to Skander's lore, could have been on Earth since 1913, which sucks for them. All Skylanders Die of course, we had to have a pretty dark entry as the last entry. In Skylanders Trap Team, Wolfgang travels 10,000 years into the future and takes over Skylands. Something interesting though in the level Future of Skylands is it is implied that Skylanders are not a thing in the future. So some of it happened sometime between the events of Imaginators and the Future of Skylands level that either killed or banished all the Skylanders. Some sort of event got rid of every single Skylander in the future, which is pretty crazy. But whatever happens to the Skylanders in the future is unknown. All right, party people, uh, thank you for watching this video. You guys know that I love to make Skylanders Iceberg videos. I mean, this is my fourth Skylanders Iceberg video I've made ever. Although I feel like we've basically covered almost every Skylanders topic that there can be covered. So I think it'd be pretty hard to find another Skylanders Iceberg out there. But if anyone wants to, and you can find enough Skylanders topics that I haven't researched and make a Skylanders Iceberg that has enough topics that are new, then you guys know I'm going to make a Skylanders Iceberg part five. Anyway, thank you to Crypt Crusher, Crash of Skylands, Mike, Nori, William, Edis, and Collective Spinny for joining me on this video. It was great to have you on this video, guys. And thank you guys, obviously, all for watching. I'll see you guys later. Bye.